Welcome to Child Protection Training Level 1. This presentation is on behalf of Winding Participation and Lifelong Learning Division at Kiri University. You will need the following equipment, a pen and some paper to make notes. When you see this symbol, please pause the video to make reflective notes. You will need these notes later when you return at the end of the training to take your test. During this online training session, you will have an opportunity to meet myself, Kylie Hazeldine. You'll be introduced to the subject of child protection and its importance, particularly in relation to the roles you are doing. We will outline what to do if you are concerned about a child, and then we will also look at information on how to conduct yourself when working with children. Hello, my name is Kylie Hazeldine. I am Kew University's designated child protection officer. This is as part of my role as Widening Participation Manager at the University. In order to carry out this role, I have been NSPCC trained and I have four years experience of training and working in the child protection arena. You are now going to see a short video from the NSPCC in order to highlight the importance of child protection. This is a quite remarkable little invention. Since it was conceived, it's helped to make the world a much smaller place, connecting people and making life easier and more convenient for all of us. And what's more, it's helped to save millions of lives with a call to the emergency services only three digits away. But did you know this little device could also help to stop something I find totally unacceptable in our society today, the abuse and neglect of children? Throughout the UK, thousands of children and young people have to face each day with the fear and the experience of cruelty. Girls and boys sexually abused for someone else's gratification, physically hurt through someone's rage, made to feel worthless, unloved or neglected. The statistics are really quite shocking. At least one child dies each week from cruelty. We now know that 11% of boys aged under 16 and 21% of girls aged under 16 have experienced sexual abuse during childhood. And nearly 32,000 children in the UK are known to be at risk of abuse right now. But these are only the children that we know about. There are thousands more who never tell anyone about the abuse they have suffered. So, how can we stop this from happening? Well, thanks to the NSPCC, thousands of children and young people can be helped through the telephone, text messaging and the internet. Hello, you're through to Childline. A call to Childline can offer them a chance to speak with a counsellor about anything that's worrying them. Can I talk to you about something? You can talk about anything you'd like to talk about at Childline. Through our online service, we can reach out to children and young people using a medium that they're most comfortable with, the internet. And through the NSPCC helpline, we can take calls from adults who are worried about a child and offer them information or advice. And where a child is at immediate risk of abuse, we can arrange for the police or social services to urgently respond. Right, you sound quite upset. What's happened? Did something happen now? All of these helplines are vitally important to ending child cruelty. Without them, many children would suffer from the effects of their abuse, some with horrendous consequences. James had been bullied at school for weeks. For him, the only way to deal with the torment was to end his life. At two o'clock in the morning, James took a lethal overdose of painkillers. Shortly afterwards, he called Childline for help. Hello, you're through to a counsellor at Childline. Can I speak to someone? Because I'm really sad at the moment. From the conversation, the counsellor was concerned that James needed emergency medical help. You said you've taken some sleeping tablets and some painkillers. James didn't feel he could tell his mum what had happened, so the counsellor encouraged James to let her speak to his mum and get her to call for an ambulance. Is it James? Someone. It was only thanks to the counsellor's careful handling of the call that James is with us alive today. Every child...
Pause this presentation now and just write a few reflective notes and think about how this film made you feel. We will now explore the definitions of child abuse. When we talk about child protection, we're talking about preventing the abuse to children. There are many different categories of child abuse. Sexual abuse, which involves forcing or enticing a child to take part in sexual activities. The activities may involve physical contact, including penetrative or non-penetrative acts. They may include non-contact activities, such as involving children looking at or the production of pornographic material or watching sexual activities or encouraging children to behave in sexually inappropriate ways. Physical injury or physical abuse is the deliberate physical injury to a child or the willful or neglectful failure to prevent physical injury or suffering. This may include hitting, shaking, throwing, poisoning, burning or scalding, drowning, suffocating, confinement to a room or cot, or inappropriately giving drugs to control behaviour. Neglect is the persistent failure to meet a child's basic physical and or psychological needs, likely to result in a serious impairment of the child's health or development. It may involve a parent or carer failing to provide adequate food, shelter and clothing, failing to protect a child from physical harm or danger, or the failure to ensure access to appropriate medical care or treatment. It may also include neglect of or unresponsiveness to a child's basic emotional needs. Emotional abuse is the persistent emotional ill treatment of a child, such as to cause severe and persistent adverse effects on the child's emotional development. It may involve conveying to children that they are worthless or unloved, inadequate, or valued only insofar as they meet the needs of another person. It may feature age or developmentally inappropriate expectations being imposed on children. It may involve causing children frequently to feel frightened or in danger, or the exploitation or corruption of children. Some level of emotional abuse is involved in all types of ill treatment of a child, though it may occur alone. Any one of these types of abuse, or combinations of these abuse, can lead to significant harm or even death to a child. The cruelty inflicted can be inflicted by anybody, by the person who cares for the child, a person known by the child, or someone not known to the child at all. When working with definitions of child abuse, it is not as black and white as it may appear. There are some grey areas. We shall take some time to explore those with each of the different definitions now. Firstly, let's consider physical abuse. Can you think of any grey areas that could cause us difficulty when thinking about this definition? Pause this video now to take a moment to reflect on this question. Here are a few things that do cause us difficulty in this area. There is often conflicting school policies. For example, physical abuse can be inflicted by somebody under the age of 18. In a school, they may deal with this abuse via the bullying policy within the school. There may be other explanations for the injury. Children have bumps and bruises all the time, but it's important to be aware that, in some cases, abuse could be the cause. Smacking is often used by parents as a form of discipline. This could be seen as physical abuse. Whether you agree with this statement or not will be impacted as to whether your parents smacked you as a child. It's important to take a step back and ensure that we are objective when we think about child abuse and not influenced by our own history. Now take a moment to think about the grey areas involved in the emotional abuse definition. Pause this video now to take a moment to reflect on this question. Firstly, we have the same case here as with physical abuse. It may be another child inflicting this emotional abuse on somebody else under the age of 18. Would a bullying policy or the child protection policy be in force here? The definition talks about persistent ill treatment. How do you define persistent and how do you measure that it has been persistent enough to have a detrimental effect on the child's development? I'd now like you to take a moment to think about the difficult areas in relation to sexual abuse definitions. Pause this video now to take a moment to reflect on this question. Firstly, there is an important element to this definition. It states 
that it is sexual abuse whether the child knows what is happening is sexual or not. Therefore, the act itself is what qualifies it as sexual abuse and not whether the child is aware of what is happening to them. The second difficulty in this area is that the legal age of consent for sexual activity in the UK is 16. When we talk about child abuse, we're talking about preventing it happening to anyone under the age of 18. These two areas of the law are not consistent and it causes us difficulties when thinking about sexual abuse and those between the ages of 16 and 18. Finally, take a moment to think about the area of neglect. What difficulties might be involved in this definition? Pause this video now to take a moment to reflect on this question. The first difficulty is thinking about what defines a child's basic needs. You need to understand what defines this in order to identify that it is being withheld. Secondly, by discussing this issue, there are several political and socio-economic issues that come to light. If the government defines what basic needs are, they put themselves in a position where they are expected to support ensuring everybody has the ability to provide children with these. It is important to understand when and where a child might be abused and what sort of children may be abused. First of all, when and where. It can happen in the home and in school as well as any other public place. With regard to who could be abused, it can happen to any child regardless of their age, their gender, their racial origin, their disability or sexual identity. Some of these may make a child more at risk of abuse but it does not mean that the absence of one of these more risk factors will prevent them from being abused. You will now see a number of child protection related facts. Just take a moment to take in this information. the video and take a moment to think about how those facts made you feel. It is important to understand the network of people that have to work together to ensure that children are protected. The various services that work together in the child protection network are the police, the NSPCC, education providers, social services, probation service and the NHS. When these services come together, they create a child protection network. The services at the bottom provide the frontline services who have a day-to-day -day contact with young people or potential offenders. The topline services are those that need to hear the reports in order to investigate child abuse cases. The police and social services do the majority of investigation. We will now explore what to do if you have a concern about a child. Step 1. Take what the child says seriously, listen carefully without interrupting or prompting, reassure them that they are not to blame. If they are in a group setting, arrange to see them on their own or at an earlier opportunity. Let them know what you are going to do to help them, but explain that this may mean that you will have to tell someone else. You cannot promise not to tell anyone. Step 2. Report your concerns to the designated teacher or a senior member of staff as soon as possible. 
they will advise on the next course of action. Do not delay in taking action, especially if a child is in need of emergency medical attention or protection from abuse. This is particularly important in cases of sexual abuse. Step 3. As soon as possible, record what was said, what you have observed, what your concerns are and what you have done. Ensure you have included exactly what the child said, including dates and times. This record should be signed and dated and kept in a safe and confidential place. And remember, you have a legal duty under the Education Act 2002 to pass on your concerns. We will now explore the importance in protecting yourself from allegations. Always be aware of your actions when working with children. Think about how your actions or what you say could be interpreted. You should never promise to keep anything secret. This could suggest a special relationship or suggest to a child that you may keep secret and abuse they will disclose to you. Also, you should never single out any child for special treatment. Always be aware of physical contact and intimate contact should never take place. You should never share personal information with young people, whether that be your mobile number or your home address. You should also think about social networking sites. Regardless of the site that you choose to use, you should never accept friend requests or people following you, you should never accept personal messages, and you should always be aware that your profile is kept private to ensure that only people who are your friends or are following you can access your information. We are now coming to the end of your child protection training presentation. So just to summarise, always be aware of your role in protecting children. Always trust your instincts. If it doesn't feel right, talk to somebody about it and report it. Always keep an open mind. And if you can't speak to a designated child protection officer, please call the NSPCC for confidential advice or access their web pages. Thank you for listening. This concludes the Child Protection Training presentation. My contact details are now displayed on the screen. Please feel free to contact me with any questions you may have about this presentation and further on in your practice working with us if you have any child protection concerns you wish to report. In order to conclude your child protection training, you will now need to go back to the original web pages and take the assessment test based on this video.